let's acknowledge the tough times we're facing right now with inflation and economic distress, supply chain issues. Let's address these by understanding the foundation of wealth. I'm Justin Hitt with Sustainable Wealth Secrets. There are certain perspectives that help you accumulate wealth over time and help you avoid some of the traps that folks get in that deplete wealth and ultimately create for you what money cannot buy. As you know from many of the newsletters, we talk about wealth that cannot be taken away, wealth that has a foundational value in the skills and relationships that help you rebuild or reproduce uh, the outcomes that you desire. Now, we also talk about how in the marketing world, people represent wealth as trappings of wealth, vehicles. Uh, So the guy standing next to the Lamborghini with the sunglasses on, surrounded by beautiful babes, who's offering you a 12-step program that's going to help you also be wealthy. They're not selling you actual wealth. They're selling you a perception of wealth that very often traps individuals into a cycle of disappointment, frustration, and poverty. They also don't talk about the concept that where you are today, there's a reason you're here today. So whether you have a very high income or you have a modest income or you have no money at all, whether you have wealth or don't have wealth, you're here on purpose. Now, again, when I say on purpose, it's either because someone has imposed a condition of finance upon you by you know, telling you you're not good enough and you've got to buy this certain clothing or you've got to have a certain smartphone or you've got to have a certain, that's a conditioning that causes you to consume rather than someone who is building a strong and valuable uh, relationship or a strong or valuable position in a marketplace where wealth comes to you. And so let's talk about in the cons- in the, the construct of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. When we're influencing other people, we're talking about self-actualization, their esteem, their sense of belonging. But what actually builds wealth is safety and, and uh, physio, physiological needs. And, and and let me you know hang with me here because again, this is not as sexy as showing you how much money I made last month or how much this or that. We are now measuring wealth in areas when we talk about the other eight forms of capital that create capital and create profits that are difficult for the typical person to measure. And so we do this, we can start seeing this in our own lives by observing people in other countries. So if you're in the United States, you're in the UK, you're in so-called developed countries, we want to look at the differences between the typical citizen, the poorest citizen, and the wealthiest citizen. Now, why are we doing this? Well, we already know that in the social construct of the political narratives, folks are always saying, well, look how many more multiples the the wealthy person earns versus the poor person. Now, they're looking at gross salary. So that has little value because, uh, for example, Elon Musk made millions and millions of dollars gross, but he was reinvesting every dollar he had into his business. And so he didn't actually have any money other than the credibility or credit he built in a marketplace. Now, the credit in the marketplace, when you borrow money from your company or you borrow money from someone else, you're not paying taxes on that income because it is kind of income. It's an inflow of money. And of course, you have the obligation to pay it back, which is a liability. But with that inflow, if you're able to put it into assets that cash flow, you're able to keep the cash flow without having to have earned the original money, which would create a tax event. Now, this is very complex. Some people may not understand it. But what we're looking at here is leverage of capital. And it it could be in the form of equity. It could be in the form of a loan. It could be an insider loan where you're borrowing money from your personal self to use in your business or from your business to use in your personal world. These are the complexities that they don't talk about when it's some dude with sunglasses on standing in front of his Lamborghini surrounded by beautiful babes. Again, we're not about motivating other people to follow your system to create wealth. We're demonstrating to you a system for wealth that you can use in your own life and prove to yourself that you can create wealth. It doesn't matter if someone else can create wealth or income or, or the trappings of success. 
we're talking about your inter wealth. And so the base of this is food, water, and shelter. These are the physiological needs on the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If these things are not taken care of, you will always fall back to try to satisfy these needs, which can cause you to make poor decisions about money. Now, is it possible for someone to have a million dollars in the bank and not feel secure about their food, water, or shelter? Well, they may not feel secure about it, but if they've got a million dollars in the bank and a $2 million home mortgage, then their shelter is at risk. If they've got a million dollars in the bank and the food they eat is garbage and it's impacting their health, then their future financial position is at risk. Food, water, and shelter. Now, if you're in a third world country, you may not have these things. If you're outside Uh, or even many places inside the United States, you may not have these things. And when you don't have these things, you're more willing to stretch ethically in order to gain these things. But could you go from not having these things to having these things very quickly? Yes, you could. And so the difference between someone who has nothing, who is poor, living on the street, requiring handouts from other people, and the person who has a minimum wage job is just as big of a gap Maybe not financially, but in stability, it's just as big of a gap as the wages between the person who mops the floors at Amazon and Jeff Bezos. This is very important to understand. We don't judge wealth based on other people's accumulation because we don't have the full details about their situation. At Jeff Bezos, richest man in the world at one time, gets a divorce, and now his wife is the second richest person in the world. Or, you know, the, the concept of divorce, the concept of situation, the concept of economic instability, the concept of inflation is ignored in the typical pitch of how to get rich. And so if we in our individual lives have taken care of the physiological needs and know that we've secured the physiological needs, we now have a confidence to then start moving towards safety needs, the sense of belonging, and esteem. Now, in the so-called modern world, it's transportation, safety, and and expression because typically we can find food, water, and shelter. And so now when it comes to transportation, does it matter if you have a, a Mercedes or a BMW, or a Ford, or a a used jalape, there's no difference as long as the transportation is consistent. Because now we're starting to look at function. We're not struggling to get food. We're not struggling to get water. We have basic shelter. Now we're looking at function. The functional implementation is what generates the wealth over time because the difference between a $50,000 car and a $25,000 car could be nothing when it comes to the functional aspect. Now, yes, people might perceive you differently. People might treat you differently. But again, the measure of wealth is on your balance sheet, not someone else's balance sheet. And even when we talk about the equity of relationships, we're talking about relationships with customers. And typically, a customer does not want to see you driving around in a fancy car. If you're a plumber, driving a Mercedes and you show up in your Mercedes car and it's a beautiful car and you jump out of that car, the first thing they're going to think is that the price is too much because obviously you're earning excessive profits. See, that language of excessive profits is even in our government. They char- they tax you on excessive earnings. Uh, why would there be any limit to the amount of earnings you should have? So we're looking at transportation and we're saying what fits the need for purpose and function of what we're doing while freeing up net cash flow that we can reinvest in other areas because transportation is an active modality and we want to have passive income and we want to have assets that grow in value and create cash flow and we want to have other things we can't have that if we're buying beyond our means remember the ratio between what a wealthy person might spend on a car even though the car is hundreds of thousands of dollars they have that in surplus. It's not a big deal. It's a small fraction of their earnings. Um, We want to buy appropriately. Now, safety is the same way. Are we safe? Now, if you're a movie star and you've got stalkers and you've got fans that are a little, you know, crazy, then you might need safety in the sense of, of, of security. You might actually have to hire a security team. 
If you're an executive or a business owner, you may need to carry a firearm or at least be more mindful about how you navigate spaces so that you're not robbed. If you're driving a Mercedes or a fancy car, you might have to be concerned about being carjacked in certain cities in the United States. So our adjustments in these different areas can improve or reduce the particular key functional areas which provide us uh, the safety needs. Expression is another factor here. Can you advertise your product and service without a lot of restrictions? Uh, you know, can you speak freely about what you're doing without getting canceled? See, it doesn't matter how much money you have if it can all be taken away by some absurd cancellation or or social uh, pressure or anything like that. And then your actual health and well-being is is reduced if you have to adjust behavior for these social conditions. So we get to these three concepts, these premises of health that are built on fundamental human rights. These are uh, unconditional, God-given rights. No government can grant them. They can only take them away. These fundamental rights, and I'll give you three of them here, um, but you, you can go back as far as the Magna Carta to find these rights. In Sustainable Wealth Secrets, these rights are more valuable than money because when you have these rights, you can get the money. Money's just the medium of exchange. If you have these rights, you can gain resources lawfully and more likely keep those resources and be able to apply them in a marketplace where you'll, you'll gain growth and perspective. So we have to avoid being drawn into plans and programs that are not valuable because they're playing to our self-interests, their esteem building, our fear of missing out. And instead, move towards foundational needs that if everything was taken away from you with these foundational rights, you'll be able to, to just recover it easily. You'll be able to build community. You'll be able to, to serve your neighbor. You'll be able to sell the products and services that are necessary to build assets that cash flow. Three of these rights are is the freedom of movement, the right to self-defense, and the freedom of speech. Now, the U.S. Constitution guarantees these things, but very often governments will put pressure or social groups will put pressure or outside organizations will put pressure to limit these things. So if you're in an environment where these fundamental rights are limited, it doesn't matter if you have a hundred billion dollars or you have a hundred dollars in the bank, you're still restricted. You still don't have freedom. You don't, you still don't have the things that are necessary in the hierarchy of needs in order to feel like you've, you've reached a success. Now we talk about, uh, self-reflection and journaling and understanding goals and, and building up a system of approach rather than just haphazardly approaching things. But the three concepts that come into play for sustainable wealth is that wealth comes from the preservation of foundational rights. Your ability to protect your wealth, the ability to protect and earn, these are foundational rights the freedom to associate with individuals. If you have a religious collective, the ability to, to, in that community, to build funds, to create your own insurance systems. These are fundamental rights. Number two is without the foundations, these critical and natural rights, you have a high chance of loss. So if, if you don't have the freedom to defend yourself and you're driving down the street in a beautiful Mercedes and that Mercedes is 1% of the uh, money you earned that month and you get carjacked, it doesn't matter how much you earn if you can't defend yourself, if you can't protect your interests. Now, again, we can protect our interests by how we plan routes. We can protect our interests by how we work with people. Uh, you might need a driver versus driving yourself. A friend of mine used to have a beautiful classic Mercedes. Uh, it was in prime cherry condition, but he also had an old beat up pickup truck. And he knew that if he was in certain neighborhoods, he'd drive the old beat up pickup truck and he'd only drive the Mercedes in places he knew he wasn't going to get carjacked. Same wealthy individual, different decisions to protect his safety. We also know that freedom of speech is important because if you can't speak freely, how can you present your products and services? Now, again, you're not telling lies. We're not deceiving people. We're not setting up situations that are untrue. And while someone who has a fancy Lamborghini and women all around them may feel like they're wealthy, it is not sustainable because economies change. Now, remember, I came from the dot-com boom and bust cycle. I've been in different kinds of markets 
uh, helping clients generate wealth, but also helping clients manage the risk associated with generating wealth and so that they are hedged appropriately so that they don't have the loss, which can undo years and years of wealth accumulation. And the last fundamental concept is that business relationships are the greatest value. And, and let me demonstrate that. Uh, at the time of this recording in 20, uh, November 2023, Xi Jinping, the president of China, is going to be in San Francisco. And individuals are paying $1,000 a seat to have di- dinner with Xi Jinping. So they're in the room having dinner. And there's the option, of course, to pay $40,000 to meet with Xi Jinping directly and to sit at his table. What is that an example of? Now, some could say political fundraising. Some could say bribery. But really, functionally, it is the building of business relationships. They are paying a tuition or an admission or a fee in order to get in the presence of a famous individual with the hope of favor, with the hope of being recognized. Now, I've sponsored events like this and I've worked as staff in events like this. The people who are paying $40,000, Xi Jinping will know who these people are and they'll ha- he'll have a profile of these individuals. And whether it's a political dinner with Joe Biden or Donald Trump or, or anybody, the, the political action committee is about relationships. It's about relationships to influence rules, laws, and even behaviors. It's a relationship to develop uh, assets that cash flow. And it is part of a system that exists that most people don't talk about. That individual, just like I I tell you about the individual who's selling a business op, it could be a legitimate business opportunity. And everybody who does the opportunity could get the same uh, probability or, or, or potential for the success, yet 100 people buy the program and it will still be one person is successful, five people are are having a really good living of it, uh, 10 people are you know, they're, they're breaking even and then the rest of everybody either doesn't do anything or they fail. What I, what I try so hard to do with Sustainable Wealth Secrets is to get you the foundational insights necessary to both recognize opportunities in the marketplace. If you are exporting from China and selling it in the United States or you are looking to export a product from the United States and sell it in China, Xi Jinping makes that decision. It is a communist country. It is ran by a very few people on a communist party. And if you were going to import something into that country, you need their blessing. You buy a $40,000 seat. Could be the cheapest money you spend. It is legitimate from a legal perspective because you're buying access to an event, not necessarily access to the individual. But you and I know the individual gets some of that money. There's also overhead associated with the event, and sometimes it could be 50% overhead. But again, um, is it political fundraising? Is it bribery? Is it money laundering? It could be all of those things, but there are certain structures that are available to build those business relationships. So in a business environment, that could be pay per play to access advertising platforms. The advertising platform gives you leverage in a marketplace to reach a larger audience. And ultimately, through that advertising platform, you can build up marketing funnels and conversions in order to create a means to sell your product or service. However, again, if your fundamental rights are not there, then you will not be able to maintain or sustain that means of production without the preservation of those fundamental rights. Others can come and take what you have because they're jealous, because they're bored, because they just saw the opportunity, or because they have no other means of improving their situation. So if you want to sustain far beyond economic situation, supply chain, political changes, these other things, you need to understand that the pursuit of liberty uh, liberty and the pursuit of happiness, the foundational principles of uh, freedom of movement, freedom of association, right to self-defense, freedom of speech. All of these elements must be preserved because it gives us the highest probability of a marketplace where we can exchange goods and services. You're not going to get wealthy by suddenly having the money bestowed upon you. 
It would even require favor. It would require business relationships in order to do that. Individuals who have wealth are not going to just simply give it away. They don't even give the charities because they, they feel because they're supporting the charitable purpose. Uh, and, and we talk about that. We've talked about charitable remainder trusts. We've talked about tax um, you know, havens, different things that we can use to reduce the amount of taxes. We also know that when the economic system fails and the money is no longer worth anything, meaning the money has no buying power, that very often relationships and sharing resources and joint ventures and, and, and individual connections are, are feasible, but they tend to only be feasible among, among individuals who have their physiological needs taken care of and their safety needs taken care of. Because nobody's going to give you access to their resources, even on a barter, if you're just simply going to lose it. So I know I've covered a lot here. These are concepts that if you, if you understand them, you could be a homeless person in a tent and still build wealth. Yet you could also, if you don't understand them, have millions of dollars in the bank and lose it all tomorrow. Very often these losses are, are, are not insignificant, but they are not seen because we're distracted by the shiny objects. We're distracted by the latest devices. We're distracted by the, um, the world around us. But to implement these three key concepts, understanding that wealth comes from the, the preservation of fundamental rights, understanding that those fundamental rights, uh, without those rights, you have a high chance of loss, and that typically and functionally, uh, wealth comes from the business relationships of greatest value, you're able to recover quickly but you're also able to discover when we have the slow degradation of our buying power, the slow loss or changing in laws that prevent certain uh, opportunities from being leveraged, or the distraction that takes you down a path that, that dilutes your ability to get things accomplished. These concepts we can explore further in the coaching programs. And if you're a court coaching client, uh, I'd love to deep dive into this specifically for your situation. Because a lot of folks, they don't feel comfortable. What if the power goes out? They, they don't feel comfortable. They'll go buy all this extra surplus equipment, not knowing that they can still function in the back of their car with a chauffeur driving them around with minimal equipment. They can leverage relationships. Um, when it comes to assets to cash flow, a lot of people get into risky assets. We do a lot of risk management. We can evaluate the risks of investments. Um, but they often will get into risky investments because they're so desperate to level up in a system that can fade away in any minute. So while these are complex topics, I would love to take the opportunity to, to help you apply them in your own situation. Because once you understand how this works, the money is the least important thing. The money has the least amount of value. The money can come and go, or it could be a different currency, or it could be in different forms in the marketplace. Um, but if you lose that marketplace, then you're subject to bribery. You're subject to buying your way into systems. You're subject into political corruption. If you want to build wealth, the kind of wealth that cannot be taken away, then listen very carefully to what I've shared here today. Where are you on the Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Where are you in different areas of your life when it comes to uh, physiological needs, safety needs, belonging, love needs, uh, esteem needs, self-actualization? Are you allowing these things to manipulate you when outsiders who understand human persuasion use them? Are you able to have net proceeds because of the decisions you made at each level to find function over fashion, to find function over keeping up with the Joneses? Because you know the Joneses are broke. The average American today cannot come up with $2,000 for an emergency in a 24-hour period or even in a week. If, if it was easy to generate wealth, everybody would do it. If it was uh, reasonable and obvious, then everybody would do it. Once you understand that people are reaching out, trying to figure out how to get success, and ignoring these fundamental concepts, you can refocus your energy to build that fundamental under, underlying concept in order to give yourself an advantage in a marketplace. And ultimately, if something goes bad in your country, you can just simply get up and go to another country because you've already established the channels. If you want to explore this in greater detail, I have a number of courses and programs 
as well as coaching guides where we can deep dive into these insights. You can learn more about that at www.sustainablewealthsecrets.com. Rather than you know scrolling around the website and trying to find something, we have a lot of materials that aren't online for obvious reasons. And those obvious reasons are that they, you know, they're they're a little auspicious in the in nature. They are um, unusual in nature. But then again, it's only the one percent that have wealth. It's only the one percent who can withstand any storm that comes to them. And it's not that hard to get up there into 10% and 20% and we can keep you there. Uh, but ultimately, ask your questions. Just go to the contact page at www.sustainablewealthsecrets and ask your questions. We have consultations available, coaching available, uh, subject to qualifications and um, you know our availability to work with you. But um, I would like to have the opportunity to, to just know that you're understanding this. It is a psychological and behavioral science concept that only helps reinforce the implementation. And so if you don't understand the concept and you don't do the implementation, then you're going to be screwed, especially with the current economic situation, the current political situation, and the current global uh, challenges we're facing today. I'm Justin Hit with Sustainable Well Secrets. I welcome your questions, comments, and concerns. I'm always interested in hearing from high-income professionals who want to transform their income into wealth and those who are willing to invest in themselves to create wealth that is sustainable and cannot be taken away, generational wealth that you can enjoy today and your family can enjoy for a lifetime. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next podcast.